Hemingway would not do well today in this culture. He would, he was just the opposite of everything they're trying to woke us up today. If Ernest Hemingway were here today, I'm sure he would be totally canceled. No doubt about it. Oh boy. Cancel culture is people that don't want you to do what you want to do. They want you to do what they want you to do. But that's what they're doing. The ocean is the same as it has always been before man set about in boats. Okay. There are three sports, boxing, bullfighting, and racing. The rest are just games. You hear that? You hear that, fucking World Cup enjoyers? There you go. To go out like a man is to set yourself on fire in the bathroom of your favorite bar. Ernest Hemingway. Wait, wait, what? Tell me about set yourself on fire. To go out like a man is to set yourself on fire in the bathroom of your own favorite bar. Bro, this guy was a badass. What the fuck? In the bathroom of your favorite bar. Oh my bar. god. Ernest Hemingway. Tell me about him. Well, he was a man's man. An alcoholic, a womanizer, philanderer, someone who wrote with very few adjectives, traveled the world, wrote from everything from the green hills of Africa, to the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. to the old man in the sea. Mm -hmm. You know, Hemingway was a larger than life figure who caroused and drank through the saloons of America to the salons of Paris, hung out with very artistic lesbians, and looked at F. Scott Fitzgerald's penis at one point closely. So should we go to what? the... Uh, Ernest Hemingway look-alike competition. Oh my god. It's just a bunch of old dudes with beards? Holy shit, who does this? Let's do this! Alright, here we are. We're in Key West, Florida. Behind us is Sloppy Joe's Bar. That's uh -huh. where the Ernest Hemingway look-alike competition takes place. It's called a Hemingway Day. It takes place in Sloppy Joe's Bar. Yeah, okay, sure. What do they call the Hemingway impersonators? Poppins. We haven't actually seen any poppins quite yet. It's hard to tell because a lot of people here kind of look old, they're kind of fat, and they have beards. Some of them have red rays. <laughs> you think that guy's a poppa? Can we zoom in on that guy right there? Nick? <laughs> There's just other random old, old fat guys with beards, and they're like, hey, are you there for the convention? They're like, no, I live here. Sir, are you are, are you a papa? Yes, I am. What does it mean to be a papa? You got to look like this. What do you think? This actually is a lot of charity that goes from this. A lot of kids get scholarships, nursing scholarships, college helps this community here. Uh, he's a veteran. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, this, this seems actually relatively wholesome. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, my God, he's my idol. Seven-time seven finalist. Time. This is my idol. I'm Ernest Hemingway. I'm going to be the guy tonight. I mean, I've been to his house in Cuba. You know, not many people can say that. What makes you more Ernest Hemingway than the other guys? Oh, my God. Making love every day. Every day? That's what Papa Hemingway would have done. Hey, girl. Oh, my God. All right. <laughs> I'd say sex had a lot to do with it. What's the largest uh, animal you've ever taken down? The Big fuck? bull elk. You strangle it? No. Oh, shot it with a 30 odd 6 <laughs> I'm an excellent yeah. shot. Just like Ernest Hemingway was. Well, Ernest Hemingway <laughs> Just wrote, popped the bitch off with a gun. <laughs> about life. The running of the bulls in, in uh -huh. Spain. He publicized that. He was too young to fight in World War I. He became an ambulance driver. He was close to the war. He commanded a room uh -huh. when he came in. And I don't really do that. You know? Well, you commanded the whole room to say that you're the most, I mean, you won a contest in front of hundreds of people. Yeah, and that's probably the most, the, the most outgoing I've ever been. My name's Greg Relatable. Crawford. I'm Papa 2012. I won in 2012. Gotta look like Hemingway. Um, I would like to go back and do some marlin fishing. Bro, I feel like it's just, it's so weird to see this. Because it's like, you know, whenever a new game comes out, and you see, it, it's like everybody riding on their dragons from dragon riding and dragon flight. And you see like a bunch of different blue dragons and they're all the exact fucking same, except, except maybe one of them has like a little bit different eyebrows or something. Yeah, it, it's a boomer cosplay comp, uh, unironically. I think on uh, his boat. It actually is, know. yeah. He was like a man's man. He was a sportsman, a fisherman, yep. a hunter. A boxer, 
the booze, the boats, and the boobs. Arnold Hemingway, <laughs> hell of a writer. I think I might have had as many concussions as he did. When I was in school, <laughs> he was required reading. And I went to high school about a, well, about a mile from where he was born. Although our school wasn't built yet. I mean, he was like notoriously what? a piece of shit. I never knew him personally, but if I did, I would probably be like, you're a piece of shit. But he like drank a lot, which like... Damn. Damn, right there, he's in the background. Wow. Same, but like, don't like beat your wife. Guys, we're gonna go get, we're gonna go Don't get beat your wife, well, that's good advice. No, 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 he's not a bad guy, no, no, no. He loves all this. He loves Spain. He loved everybody in Spain. Well, I, I mean, how could it be a bad guy if he loved everybody right. in Spain? We've got a whole, like, thousands of years to learn stuff, and so it would make sense that the people in the a thousand years, like, you know, as we go on, you know. That's what they're doing. They want to <laughs> close you out to make them, you be like them, and the way they want you to act. Ernest Hemingway made his home here in Key West. You know, he'd hunted a lot of things. Lions, tigers, elephants. I feel like there's nothing that seems less Ernest Hemingway than getting together in a support group with other dudes and complaining about how society won't accept the way that you do things. Y you know what I mean? Like, yeah, society probably didn't accept the way that he did a lot of things back then either. Like... Bro, this guy didn't give a fuck. He just went out and did whatever the fuck he wanted to do. That's it. Yeah, the original top shit. Yeah. yeah, if you give a shit, you automatically lose. Even man on occasion. You know, there were rumors that his fourth marriage. They were up to some things. Fourth? If you see the Ken Burns uh, series on, on Hemingway, maybe he was doing something else on the side. <laughs> you think that maybe Hemingway swung both ways? I don't say swing both ways with men, but I think his fourth wife, they had certain things that they did with one another or to one another. No, no. Oh, like he, like she was pegging him. Is that pegging? Okay, yeah. yes. Do you think you have what it takes? Okay, yes. Bro, this documentary has got to be lit. What the fuck? How do you even know that? Like, what are you talking about, man? Takes to become the next papa? Yes, I do. I think I've got the look. I think I've got everything that goes with it. I'm a little oh, more irrelevant than maybe some of the others. But uh, yeah, I think I do. Professionally, I work as a clinical psychologist. What does Ernest Hemingway mean to you, you know? I think Ernest Hemingway has a uniquely American... I mean, the guy's got a great beard. ...message in his work. Because it's unapologetically optimistic. As a psychologist, does it trouble you that Ernest Hemingway killed himself because he wasn't a good writer anymore? <laughs> God damn! It's like, what the fuck? They just brought this guy... So yeah, now Andrew brings in, you know, now he gets to be good cop and this guy gets to be bad cop an outcome that's not uncommon given his time, his place, his life experience. Well, that We're having a lot of fun here. How do, how do you want to go out? 90 years old, sneaking in a beautiful woman's bedroom and getting shot by her husband. Cash App is... I love that that is the transition that we use for the ad for the video. And by the way, a word from our sponsors. Fair play? I mean, A, it could be worse. In my opinion, American Dream, yeah. the manliest app on the market. In fact, I think if Ernest Hemingway were alive right now, he'd be using he Cash would App. Use Cash app. <laughs> but women can use it too to send money from peer to peer. However, Cash but App women is can more use than it too? Peer -to -peer oh, money never mind, services. guys. It's a great way to exchange and receive Bitcoin instantly. But beyond that, I have some great news. If what you go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and download Cash App right now, you can use code CHANNEL5 for a free 15 That's CHANNEL15. Terms apply, guys. Oh my fuck. Bro, please tell me. This reminds me so much of, you know whenever everybody would make level 1 characters and then run through the city with all of their starter gear on? This is exactly the same fucking thing, man. Holy, holy, you have to act.
actually have lived these stories. You need to have been shot at. You need to have been bitten. Fort Lauderdale Beach. I leaned on a kid's Camaro. He didn't like that. All I know is I got up okay. off the beach. I was covered in sand, broken cheekbone, which still plagues me to this day. What's the closest to death you've ever come? Swimming with sharks, hanging with Jamaicans, hanging out with Colombians. Say no more. Your name is Dave Hemingway? Yeah. You're related to Ernest Hemingway? No, not related, no. Not related. Your na last You're name the is? The first Hemingway that ever won the contest. It takes that guy looks like a mix between Ernest Hemingway and Ted Cruz. Holy fuck. Do you guys see it? Or am I the only person? Am I crazy? You guys see it? Yeah, like, what the fuck? Related, no, not related. Your na last You're name the is? The first Hemingway that ever won the contest. It takes uh, perseverance and somebody who's not overly concerned with winning because the Hemingway Society it's more like a fraternity. So here we are we're right now. We're inside Sloppy Joe's. It's the semifinals. All the dudes behind you right here, they're called the Papa Judges. They're all former contestant winners. They're going to judge the whole competition. Contestant Tim Stockwell. Thank you, Mark. Oh, my God. Mamas and papas, the excitement you bring is outstanding. Hemingway would say more badass shit than that. And if you give me the opportunity and the privilege to be a papa, I will work tirelessly. None of these guys are like. Wait, this has been going on since before I was born? Holy shit. Killed a giraffe or anything? So it's like... I like being here tonight. I'm often called out with, hey, Hemingway, I love your books. Been to the uh, bar in Venice, Harry's Bar. Been to bars in Paris. And I want you to know that there are bigger fish than this out there. Oh, my God, look at you. And look at you. And look at all. Just like so basically, in order to get in character, they get drunk. Yeah, and, and then there's just a bunch of 55-year-old men that go up on stage and talk about fishing and drinking for like two or three minutes, and they decide what the best one is. They're ordering that 55, 65, I, I mean, I don't know. Papa, I love yeah, Sloppy Joe's, and just like Papa, I love my room. God damn, that was fun. My strategy is to be different. My strategy is to stand out. Throw it out there. Don't sit there being mumbler in the microphone, as I call them. But a lot of positive energy, a, a, a lot of good good vibes, and, and go out there and just put it out there. You got it, baby. We're here. <laughs> I didn't get the message about the dancer. Look at that, man. You see that? But you know what? I got something for you right now. A one and a two. And God, this guy is so good. Holy shit. This guy's a fucking legend. Just like the way he talks and everything. What the fuck, man? Yeah. I'm just a wannabe who's walking wrong. Well, I'd like to name Nick and when I sang this song. We're back in Key West. <laughs> Sloppy Joe's. And what goes down from there, nobody knows. Hey, it's a drunken wannabe. That guy did pretty well. Yeah, that was impressive. Okay. Boomer confidence? Yeah. Yeah, that's the guy. That's the guy. They're like, Dad, I need to get a job. What do I do? Well, you got to go up. Like, these. this is the guy who's like, listen, you got to go up. You go up to the store. You know, you, you put on a nice shirt and you, you find the manager and you hand them the resume uh, there in person. Yeah, that's the, yeah, you wear a suit. There it is. The mall Santa's, yeah, give him a, a, a firm handshake. Let's see your handshake, son. Papa 2022! Oh, my God. It is uh, 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They just wrapped up the final round of the Hemingway Days competition, so within, within about 30 minutes, they're going to announce the new Papa. Do you think the new Spider-Man movie's too woke? Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but probably is, yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but probably, yeah. Explain to me why you're a man wearing a Spider-Man costume with the Confederate flag who works for InfoWars. Well, we 
man. Seems seems fine to me. Yeah, just Florida things, guys. Ain't no th yeah. Don't worry about it. Just Florida things. We don't call it the Confederate flag anymore. We call it a Rebel flag or a Southern flag. Yes. You, you work for Infowars? Uh, freelance. You know. How, how's the war going? Oh, I see. Yeah, there we go. Uh, it's crazy. Like, how do you just find one of these? I feel like finding one of these is like finding like a shiny Pokemon or like a Mewtwo or something like that. Like you just randomly come across a guy running around, like scooting around on a scooter in a Spider-Man outfit with a Confederate flag cape on with an Infowars sticker. How do you find this? Like it's, yeah, it's, it's fucking unicorn. How do you do this? It's insane. Yeah, go to political events. Maybe that's it. Uh... <laughs> I, but there, it's very common. I, I know obviously people that don't live in the South won't get this, but a lot of people, it's not as common now as it was. But whenever I was in high school, I remember many people would use the Confederate flag and it was just like, yeah, this is just, this is the flag of the South. And like these people didn't even know what the Civil War hardly even was. It's very common cultural thing down there. Excellent. We're whooping ass. Less, Number less so in Austin because I'm in Austin, Texas, but uh, in Florida and I think probably the rest of Texas, it's much more common. Nobody likes the New World Order anymore. I'm just surprised because I didn't know that Spider-Man had political leanings. It's not politics anymore, it's war. Politics are over, dude. Politics are when you negotiate. No more negotiations. You're gonna start war? No, we're gonna militarize the border and legalize marijuana. Alright, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, there we go. What do you think Spider-Man or Peter Parker would make of the World Economic Forum? Uh, well, he would tell you that there's a reason that it's in uh, the capital city of Ethiopia. Okay, why is the Economic Forum headquarters in the capital city of Ethiopia, folks? Why? Because that's where King Solomon kept the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, that's where the Ark... So, like, you thought that he was going for some sort of thing because it was, like, racist, right? No. No, it's because King Solomon had the Ark of the Covenant there. Yeah, no, it, it, you thought you thought he was racist? No, he's crazy. Yeah, duh. The covenants, but that's where King Solomon's bloodline is when he married the Queen of uh, Sheba. So that's why it's there. Yes. Makes sense. That's the only reason it's there. Otherwise, it'd be in Copenhagen or Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. or somewhere else. Yes. I, th I think it's in, in Belgium. No, the World Economic Forum for the UN is, uh, headquarters is in Abu Dhabi, whatever, Abu Dhabi, uh, Ethiopia. Yes. And that, that's where the Ark of the, the Covenant is? The Ark of the Covenant is in Ethiopia. Let's find out. Okay. Ethiopia, yes. Yep. You're the first guy I've ever seen that has something this cool in my life. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It's called Made in the Shade. Do you have an engineering background? No. Do you think the devil is real? Who? The devil? <laughs> nah, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you like Ernest Hemingway? He was okay. He was a, kind of a pig. You know, he was married four times, divorced four times, had two wives, had one here and one in Cuba. At the same time. You think it's kind of weird that all these guys are dressed like it? Everything's weird here, but, you know, that's, you just let it be. For instance, I had a hooker that... I th okay, all right, wait a second. Let's finish this out. Yeah, I pause. Uh, all right, all right, never mind. Everything's weird here, but, you know, that's, you just let it be. For instance, I had a hooker that was, um renting from me and she was saying that she was helping save men from ruining their marriages i didn't understand that logic but. i do so it's like if the guy goes out and he gets a hooker then he doesn't need to fulfill he doesn't follow through with the relationship with another girl bro this guy is a legend yeah, gave some content. Oh my god. Jeff is my favorite papa, but I don't think that he looks or acts anything like Ernest Hemingway. In a way, I think that makes him the most Hemingway-like. Yeah. Hemingway being a man's man, radical individual. Jeff is Hemingway, not these other douchebags. I thought that the previous winners of the competition, the papas, had sort of a smug attitude. I'm Ernest Hemingway. I mean, it's a lifetime appointment. The only other people in America who get that are the Supreme Court judges, and they just banned abortion. <laughs> All right. Uh, that, that's one way to put it. Yeah, there you go. I mean, I, 
I don't know. I feel like, again, any of these, like, people that are trying to, like, emulate some, like, famous person who is famous for being, like, does anybody else, like, see, like, yeah, obviously, I think this is just really, at the end of the day, like, good, wholesome fun. Like, nobody's getting hurt here. There's nothing really bad happening. Like, I'm not trying to meme on these guys too much. But, like, is anybody else seeing the irony in everybody getting together and praising a guy for being a rugged individualist by dressing and looking exactly like him and having a competition to see who's most like him? Who's the biggest individual here? You know, like, who's the who's the most individual? Who, who looks more like somebody who's an individual? Yeah, it's ironic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I'll be right back. I'll be back. So I wasn't wearing Amaru pants? No, it's just a fucking, like, actually, I got these. Uh, somebody gave these to me. These are, um, uh, what, what's that called? Uh, Pac-Man, Pac-Man, uh, fucking, what do you call it? Uh, uh, pajamas. I wear them because they're comfy. Pizza pants. Why I have pizza on? Why I have pizza? How the fuck you have pizza pants? The fuck you talk about? He's the official punk shell champion of the U.S. Wait. Bro, I love how, like, it's like, is this... So, like, boomers don't have video games, so they make their own achievements up in real life. It's like he doesn't have, like, world first. He's not, like, radiant and valorant. He's, like, the official conch shell champion of the U.S. Yeah. We are happy to have you. Man, you are just passionate here tonight. Look at this. A lot of people. It's because of the vest. It's 100% because of the vest. Oh, woe is me. Woe is me. I'm devastated. Totally devastated. Yeah, the, the vest you know carried what? him. It don't get no better than this. Is there a part of you that feels like you kind of got robbed? No, not really. After, I know everybody on this stage that made it. Hey, it is what it is. There's something to be it said is. for just like... <laughs> it is what it is. ...in stride, you know, oh, keeping, yeah. it, keeping it pushing. Sure, sure, you see it. We're having a good time. Appreciate you, Jeff. All right. Thank, thank you, man. God. How do you feel right now? You just won. Ecstatic. Can you describe the feeling of ecstasy? Uh, I wouldn't go quite that far, but uh, <laughs> as happy as I've been in a long, long time for sure. Why you? I've been here a while. This is all about an education fund. It's also about a family and friends. And uh, this is a very, very tight group of brothers. The more money you raise, the better chance you have. I actually seemed like a good dude. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they were just, just chilling. Interesting. Wait, 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 what was this? Really? Yep. Very, very tight group of brothers. The more money you raise, the better chance you have. Really? Yep. So it's, so just like, so it is like a video, it's a video game for boomers. Yeah, and they could pay to win. That makes sense. Sure. Interesting. Wow. What's the most, what's the most confusing and mysterious thing that you've ever seen? Confusing and most skinwalker ranch. What it, what is a skinwalker? A skinwalker is a shapeshifter out in the Utah basin that the Indians, they over the years have said it's in the basin. It's a shifter. It, it can go from a person. It can go to a coyote. It can go to any sort of shifts and a shapeshifter. But they have those out there in the Utah basin where the uh, skinwalker ranch is. What do you think Ernest Hemingway would do if he saw a skinwalker? Shoot, shoot it, it. yeah. <laughs> probably try to shoot it. What's the biggest bird you've ever seen? I saw a condor out at the uh, in the uh, Grand Canyon. This That's it. That's the fucking video right there. What's the biggest bird you ever seen? Oh, I saw a condor out in the Grand Maybe Canyon. Boom, that's done. Yeah, fucking gold. I I think it's a um, it, it it's a nice it, it's a nice little uh, it, it's a nice little video. Yeah, g give me one second. It's super wild. It's on Twitter. You want to read the piece? Sorry for n new Witcher drama. Do Moy podcast got a leak from the writers. 
Uh, yeah, remind me about that in just a minute. Let me just link this and talk about it, okay? I think this is fucking great. I, I think the guys, I mean, it's for education. It's just a bunch of fucking gray-bearded, gray-haired, fucking 60-year-old dudes getting together, getting drunk, just enjoying their time. I think this is totally fine. Yeah, I, 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 it's not like, it's funny in a way, but the best part about it is that it does remind me of what it's like whenever I make all new characters on a new realm and everybody makes a character on the same realm and everybody looks the exact fucking same. Yeah, I, I love this, man. It is great. And it's funny because they're having fun. Yeah, they're having fun. It's harmless. It's good. And I think this is one of the things that Andrew does the best at is like making videos like this where it shows people, you know, that have like maybe disagreeable viewpoints or, or life outlooks. But at the end of the day, they're just people enjoying themselves, keeping to themselves. And that's about it.